Hi guys, today I wanna to talk about some of the basic reference materials that I feel like every audio engineer should have or know about. As audio engineers and music producers, we sometimes get very nerdy and technical in the interest of our art, and that's when we bust out reference materials to help understand our craft better. I hope this helps you guys out a bit, and I'll put a link in the description below to a page on my site where you can go to access all of these reference materials. So without any further ado, let's talk about just a few of the reference materials that I've used and sometimes committed to memory over the years. Okay, number one is frequency charts. Frequency charts show the frequency range of some common instruments and sound sources. If you've ever wondered how far you can logically go with a high pass filter EQ on an instrument, a frequency chart is a great place to start. You can simply look up whatever instrument is on the track that you're EQing and the chart will show you the frequency range for that instrument. And it'll help you ballpark a good starting point for your EQ. It can also help you if you want to do something like boost a certain instrument a bit in a mix, but you're not sure where to start. Just look up the frequency range for that instrument and start there. You can also use this type of reference to figure out where some of the muddiness in your mix is originating. Just reference the chart and look for overlaps between instruments and that frequency range might be a good place to start. This reference seems to be more useful for beginners and I definitely reference this type of chart a lot when I was first starting out. Nowadays I've gotten a lot better at just knowing what a given frequency is so I don't need to reference this as much but it's great if you're just starting out or you're working on developing your ear. Just keep in mind that these charts often show the frequency range for the fundamental frequency for an instrument which means that you might have harmonics that go beyond the frequency range on that instrument claimed by the chart. So as usual, make sure that you use your ears. You don't want to accidentally chop off some harmonics that you'd want to keep. I particularly love using the interactive chart that's on the independentrecording.net website. The second reference material that I have on my list for today is equal loudness curves. Awareness of this chart is really important because it tells you a lot about the way we perceive sound as human beings. So different frequencies at varying loudness levels are perceived differently by the human ear. So this chart shows you the actual loudness points at each frequency that will be perceived as equal volume by the human ear. What that ultimately means is that this chart can help you conceptualize why the frequency balance of a mix will sound different at different volumes. It also helps you understand that the way we hear sound does not have a linear and parallel correlation with actual mechanical loudness in the air. It's an essential concept to understand for any mixing engineer that wants to accurately monitor their mix. Number three is a detailed chart of microphone polar patterns. The polar pattern of a microphone tells you how sensitive it will be to any sound coming at it from different angles. The type of polar pattern that your mic has will affect the sound that you ultimately achieve while recording. So it's very important to be aware of what polar pattern your microphone is currently using. While we might not reference polar pattern charts as much as audio engineers, it is very important to familiarize yourself with the different types of polar patterns when you're starting out. And that means all of them, not just the ones that we see the most in the studio, like the cardioid, the figure eight, or omni mics. Number four is a chart of microphone types. At their core, microphones detect the physical energy that is sound in the air and converts it to electrical energy in the form of voltage or current. That electrical energy is analogous to the physical or mechanical energy in the air, which as a side note is where we get the term analog from. Anyway, there are many ways that microphones convert this energy, and that's how we arrive at the many types of microphones. You might have already heard of some of these microphone types. So some of the most common types are ribbon microphones, dynamic microphones, and condenser microphones. It's important to familiarize yourself with these different microphone types since how they convert the energy will affect how you can use the microphone and the type of sound that you will get. Georgia State University has a pretty cool interactive uh, graph that I'll put a link to in the description for you guys if you want to learn more. And kind of as a side note, there are also some pretty cool microphone types that are more on the experimental side. So things like liquid microphones that involve free-flowing water and microphones that use lasers. Okay, and finally, number five is reflection coefficients and acoustics charts. So now different materials reflect sound more than others and it's important to understand how your surroundings will affect your sound. One of the scientific ways to understand this is to look at the reflection coefficient for varying materials. 
Now, as audio engineers, we don't necessarily need to use reflection coefficients regularly. I haven't used them much, and I don't plug them into formulas very often either. However, this type of chart is something that I reference on occasion to spruce up my working knowledge of how different materials reflect sound in a relative sense. So inversely, you could also spruce up your working knowledge with an absorption coefficient chart. They're also very useful for doing acoustic design work. So if you're building or designing a studio and you really want to do things right, then you might want to look into these charts. Okay, so that's it. I hope you guys liked this video and let me know what you guys think in the comments below. For today's question, I wanna know what reference materials have you found useful in the studio or audio world? Please leave your answers in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, please hit the little like button, share the video, or subscribe to my channel. I'll be coming out with new videos every other Wednesday, and thanks for watching. Okay. <sighs> okay, I'm good.